one. Hello, aviation operations students. I would like to introduce you to Brian Springer, who is the airport manager. And I will let you tell, let, let him tell you about himself, how he got interested and got into this area and kind of where we're going in the future. Brian, welcome. All right, well, thank you, Heidi. Uh, hopefully uh, it's a beneficial to all of the students. Uh, so I was kind of predisposed uh, to get into the industry because both of my parents were uh, in the airline industry from uh, uh, before I was born. And so when I came along, uh, it was uh, pretty much genetic. Uh, I loved the airport, loved flying. Uh, for many years, I thought, uh, you know, as in my youth, I thought I'd be a pilot. Uh, but as I uh, kind of uh, looked at it closer over the over the time frame, uh, more and more, I figured out that uh, I was much more geared toward uh, operations, airline operations, airport operations, and uh, that was where truly my interest level lied. Uh, so I eventually I uh, started cleaning airliners overnight uh, as they uh, needed to be cleaned. Uh, that eventually got me a job with Northwest Airlines, uh, doing a ticket counter, ramp, all of the uh, airport operations type things. Uh, and over time, gained more experience, got into management with Northwest Airlines, uh, left, kept leaving Bozeman, left here several times. Uh, you know, had positions in uh, as their station manager in Kalispell, Montana, uh, worked out in Honolulu, opened a whole lot of stations, and, uh, and eventually I was their uh, uh, manager of uh, uh, ground operations training uh, at their headquarters in Minneapolis. So I had uh, basically their uh, training department for airport management, uh, terminal, you know, the airline management at the airport. Uh, all of their ground handling, cargo, ground security coordinators, uh, and uh, hazardous goods. And so I was responsible for that. And eventually I decided I kind of wanted to move back to Montana. Uh, knew the airport uh, director here, uh, stopped in his office one afternoon. And as I was commuting back to Minneapolis, and uh, we had a conversation, and he said he was going to be hiring an assistant. Uh, so shortly thereafter, I applied and uh, uh, got the job and came back as the assistant airport director back in uh, 1999. I was the assistant for 10 years. And then in 2009, when he retired, I became the airport director and I've been here ever since. That is fantastic. So if anyone is thinking about, I mean, you really started out in the, equi the aviation equivalent of the mailroom. Uh, <laughs> so my question to you is if someone was interested in pursuing this, what do you recommend as far as education, training, how to prepare themselves to look into this field? Don't rush. I think there is a, uh, an element that, and I certainly had it when I was younger, that really expected me to step into uh, especially management roles, and you know, especially right after I got my degree, and uh, th thinking that, yeah, I'm just going to go right in and and uh, I'm going to change the world. Uh, what I really found was uh, opportunities for experience in various uh, areas that I never anticipated, and every one of those areas uh, opened up uh, other opportunities. And you know, over time, I think I you know became much more rounded. Uh, I had a great you know mailroom experience. To give your example, you know, I, I've de-iced airplanes. I've uh, you know empty lavatories and uh, you know all the all the fun stuff. Uh, and uh, you know, and eventually you find that uh, uh, that knowledge is very valuable. And when you get into uh, management, uh, there's a there's a kind of two pathways to management. One is through the School of Hard Knocks, and the other one is through education. Uh, and I was fortunate; I got to do both. Uh, so I think that it's uh, it's important to know that you know it's more than just education. It's more than just experience. It's really trying to get uh, uh, a knowledge 
uh, that's well-rounded, that makes you valuable. And that really is what uh, is, you know, turns careers. And I understand that. It makes me think of when I went into meteorology, it was great that I had a degree, but in the East Coast, going to school at Penn State, they taught you about the weather from the Mississippi River eastward. Uh -huh. And storms coming in off the ocean, the mountains, they, ha they have a huge impact on weather, as we know locally as well. And so I had, there were failures, I had the opportunity to learn from some great people. And I think that's another thing is to, you can learn from anybody. The people that you're working with all have something to share with you. I learned so much from my students each semester. Oh, so, absolutely. Can you, so can you tell me what your job is, is like now? Well, I think to break it down real simply, I kind of have uh, uh, three jobs uh, that uh, consist of being an airport director. Number one, I'm, I'm like a, a city manager. Uh, I manage a small city uh, that has uh, uh, sewer and water systems. It has roads, only some of the roads we call runways. Uh, we have uh, airport police, we have airport fire. Uh, so many of the same things that a city has, uh, just on a different scale and very much oriented toward uh, uh, aviation. Uh, my second position would be more like a mall manager. Uh, I've got this terminal building here that uh, uh, really operates a lot more like a mall than, you know, pretty much anything else. Uh, we have all these businesses that operate inside the terminal, uh, and uh, uh, each of them has, you know, they're trying to make a, make a living. Uh, some of the businesses, instead of a Macy's or, uh, or a Barnes & Noble, we call them Delta Airlines or Hertz Rent-A-Car. Uh, and you know, we have restaurants and gift shops and all those uh, uh, concessions. And then it extends beyond the, the airport you know, or the terminal building to the businesses uh, throughout the airport and on the, you know, to the FBOs, uh, flight schools, uh, parking concessionaires. Uh, there's just a number. In fact, you know, at our airport, there's over 40 entities that do business on the airport. So. Uh, you know, very much so, uh, you know, I'm, I am a mall manager to some degree. And then the, the third thing that I spend a lot of time on is really kind of economic development. And that's working with the community as a whole uh, to, you know, basically educate the importance of the airport, what it means, uh, you know, be part of the community, uh, working with them on different endeavors, uh, such as creating, you know, an airport interchange uh, to uh, recruiting new airline service. And so it, uh, uh, that be, is also a very important part of my job. So really those three elements are kind of the key uh, uh, breakdowns that I kind of look at of what I do on a daily basis. Thank you very much. I think one thing that people don't understand is the role of the airport board. So if you could talk a little bit about the role of the board and your interaction with them, that would be great. Well, in our case, the airport board is a five member appointed board. Uh, they're appointed by the uh, Gallatin County Commission. Uh, they each serve a term of five years and each of them is on a different starting year. Uh, so we have the potential for a new member every, uh, every year. Uh, but at the same time, they can be reappointed. Uh, they are my boss. Uh, and I think it's important that, you know, there's always a bigger boss. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I think, you know, obviously, when we look at creating the, the direction of the airport, uh, from the airport management side, we have a lot of uh, uh, input. Uh, we can make recommendations. Uh, and we have a lot of data that we can provide to the airport board to, you know, hopefully uh, let them decide the direction of the airport and, and, and really focus on, uh, you know, where development happens, how it happens, uh, you know, and so it, they become really the guiding uh, part of the airport. Uh, but notwithstanding, you know, I have a lot of uh, ability to uh, educate and uh, but if at, if there comes to a time where you know somebody might not agree with me on something, 
they absolutely have the right to take that issue to the airport board and the airport board will take that uh, uh, under advisement and they'll either, you know, uh, change my direction a little bit uh, or they'll, uh, you know, reaffirm the direction that we're heading. Uh, and so really it's a, it's a good process. I think we have a, we're very fortunate. To, there are five member boards tend to be pretty good. Uh, there's a, some boards out there that are uh, much larger. There are some that are smaller. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, that's important, but probably the, the bigger thing that is even more so is the actual governing uh, structure of the airport. Uh, for our airport, we're an airport authority, which means essentially we're relatively autonomous. Uh, we don't report to a city or a county. Uh, it uh, streamlines the efforts. Uh, and really, our entire focus is the airport. Uh, there are many airports that are city airports or county airports. And, and those airports, uh, uh, you know, are, you know, I think they have divided attentions. You know, the city or the county that they're working under has so many other focuses that it's hard for them to, you know, place the, the emphasis on the airport. And sometimes the airport gets lost in the mix because of that. So we're pretty fortunate being an airport authority. Uh, we've got a great board, a very invested board in, in you know, the direction of the airport. And, uh, you know, my job is to make sure that, you know, uh, I provide all the information they can possibly need to make accurate decisions. And you have one of our instructors, Kendall, on the board. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think uh, in my experience as school board, too, it's kind of interesting because a board is both a leader and a servant, because while you're autonomous, you still have the airport community, you still have all the guidance and things coming from the federal level, you still have the community you're sitting in. And so while the board is the boss, they're also responding to all those levels of requirements and inputs and everything as well. Absolutely. There's always a bigger boss. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Brian, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to add before we close out this interview? No, I appreciate the opportunity just to uh, speak with you all. Well, and thank you for sharing your experience with the students. Have yourself a most wonderful day. All right. You too, Heidi. Thanks. Bye.